Hey friends, Dylan Bates here with the Final Cut Bro. Really quick, we hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and I could not be more excited about it. Also, my friends at Soundstripe are sponsoring a really fun giveaway at the end of this video. So stick around to see that. In today's tutorial, we are gonna be covering how to create this really cool hyperlapse effect in motion in Final Cut Pro. This tutorial was requested by my bro, Santo Peter, on my channel. So thank you so much for the request and let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually pull up a grid on our camera and you can do that within the base camera app. Um, but we're gonna to have to jump into settings on our phone. So you just hop into settings here and then from there you're gonna scroll on down to camera. You select that. And then you're just gonna to wanna to select this grid option here um, under composition. All you're gonna to wanna to do is actually, with those grid markers, line it up with whatever your subject is. And that's gonna really help you in your edit to get the motion tracking really spot on. Or if you have to do it manually within Final Cut Pro, it's gonna help you tremendously. So we're just gonna look and find our subject in the frame, which is the cross at the top of that church. And I'll line it up. And you can zoom in and make sure you find out where it is and then we'll just take a photo. And we'll just keep lining it up and taking a step that's about the same distance each time. You might feel super stupid while you're doing this out in public, but trust me, if you add a little music from Soundstripe, you are gonna look awesome. So we got our photos, let's get into editing. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is actually import your photos using AirDrop from your phone. Once you have done that, go ahead and drag it out of your downloads and put it into a folder. Now I have this hyperlapse folder I've created here and it's gonna be important that you don't have any other photos in that folder. So there's actually two different methods that you can create this time lapse. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do a very good job taking the photos, so I have to do a more manual method using Final Cut Pro, but I thought it was important to show the process of troubleshooting. But if you want to just skip that, I will have a time code and you can skip to the motion portion of this tutorial. We're just gonna go into Final Cut Pro and we're gonna push Command I and we will just select our hyperlapse folder here and push import selected. Now you can see I've got all of these photos here and we will select our first photo, go on down to the bottom and push shift and select our last photo. So if we want to get all of these photos into a time lapse in Final Cut Pro, all we need to do is click and drag and put it onto our magnetic timeline. Now it is important that it is the magnetic part of the timeline, as you'll see here in a little bit when we set the duration of all of the clips, just so they all push together. You'll notice that each of these clips is actually like 10 seconds or something crazy long. So we definitely don't want to time lapse that slow. So all we're going to do is select all of our clips, push control D, and this will allow us to set the duration of all of our clips at the same time. So we will push one and that will set everything to only one frame and you can see the one here. So when I push enter, now all of our clips are only one frame and this looks much more like a time lapse. So originally I was planning on actually reshooting these photos because I did such a bad job lining them up with the grid that I, I set up originally. But then I realized it would probably be more valuable to know how to fix a shot that didn't work because sometimes you are traveling and you just don't have the chance to go back and reshoot. So this is actually gonna be showing you the troubleshooting process, which is gonna require a lot of manual work on your end, but it is doable and it, the results turn out great in the end. So the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually set this to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So go ahead and select all of your photos, come on over here to the video inspector and go down to the spatial conform 
and we're going to set that to fill and that will automatically set this to the 16 by 9 format that we want unless you're wanting to do a square uh, hyperlapse in that case don't even bother so if i play this back you can see that it is just absolutely atrocious with how shaky it is but have no fear this is going to be easily fixed and it's going to look great in the end but it's going to require lining up each of the photos with a single point on our video editing so to do that you could download a plugin with like fancy overlays and stuff but i wouldn't bother just push Control t and that will give us a title here and we're just gonna set that to whatever letter you want but i like x because it gives us a nice clear spot to line up with and i like to set the color of this to red just so i can visually see it very easily and then we can come on up over here and set the opacity down a bit now let's just drag this X over the top of where we want our cross to line up every time. And let's set our scale much, much smaller. I probably should have waited to set the opacity, but that's no problem. And we'll just zoom in here with Command Plus, put this X directly over the cross, and we'll just let the arms kind of shoot out on all sides of this cross. Now I was an idiot and do, didn't do that on the first frame, so let's go back to the first frame and set this cross or this X right here. Perfect. And we can even drop the scale down a little bit more. Now what's going to be annoying is jumping to each frame. Every time you try to move the background photo, it's just going to end up moving the X and it's just really annoying. So to fix that, we are just going to select our X and we will select the crop tool. We'll zoom out here and we'll just bring the crop way in. Oh, come on, it did this to me earlier. We'll push the crop tool. There we go, now it's working. And we'll just bring it as close to that X as we can. If we zoom in here, we can push H for the hand tool to slide around and see what we're looking at. There we go. The X looks like it is in good shape. Great. Okay, so we can get out of the crop tool and all we are going to do, all we're gonna do, this is gonna take a while, so I'm sorry. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't do it right, this is the price we pay, I guess, as video editors. Okay, so we're gonna go through each frame and we're gonna push the right arrow and that will push us forward one frame. And we're gonna make sure we have the transform tool selected here. You can also get that with shift T. And we are going to drag the background here to line up with that X in each frame. So we'll push the right arrow, drag our frame over there, and we're just gonna have to do this for all 100 something frames that we have. So it's gonna be tedious, but it's well worth taking the effort if you want a really good hyperlapse um, and you just kind of botched the lining up of each shot. 2,000 years later. I have all of those photos lined up and if I play back, you can see it is already a lot smoother than it was. It's definitely got some wiggle, um, but we're gonna fix that in motion. What we're gonna do is actually get rid of some of these black edges that appear on the side, and that's super easy. Go ahead and select all your photos, push Option G, or you can right click and do New Compound Clip. We'll just call this hyperlapse done, or whatever you wanna call it, it really doesn't matter. And come on over here to the scale and we'll set that to something like 102 and that should get rid of all of the black edges that appear and just give us a nice hyperlapse. But uh, we got a little bit more work to do to finish this up. So let's go ahead and export it and send it to motion. So we'll just delete that X and we'll go on over to the top right. There we go, export file and we can just call this hyperlapse uh, manually tracked or stabilized maybe. And then we'll just push next. And I actually like to leave this at ProRes just so I have the maximum amount of quality that I can get out of JPEGs. <laughs> um, so you can do whatever you want. So now that we've done that, we can actually jump into motion. So this next part is for people who didn't need to manually track their photos in Final Cut Pro. Um, so you can actually just import your photos as a time lapse within Motion. So just come down here to import as project, go to your file wherever it is and select the first photo. Come on down to options and set that as an image sequence. And then I would set the frame rate to whatever your your end project is going to be. So 2398 for me and we will import as project. Now, if I play this back, um, you'll see why I needed to manually track it. It's just 
atrociously shaky and um, I actually couldn't get the trackers to stick. So I had to manually track it in Final Cut Pro. Let that be a lesson to you to just take a little extra time and shoot it right. So I'm going to now set up a new project here with my manually tracked one. We'll just do import as project, select our manually stabilized one and bring that into motion. And it's shaky, but we can very easily fix that. These same steps apply whether you have a time lapse or a manually tracked one. Select your video or photos, come on up to behaviors, go down to motion tracking and stabilize. Jump on over here to the inspector and we are actually gonna click this add button and that will give us a wonderful red tracker here. And make sure you're just on the first frame and find a point of high contrast, just like the cross, which is why I actually chose the cross as kind of the, the point for this hyperlapse. So we're gonna need to change a few settings for these trackers to work really well. Uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is actually go to this look ahead frames and set that to zero. In my stabilization tutorial, I actually said use look ahead frames and bring that up higher. But for this particular project, we need it lower because our frame is constantly uh, changing. So the image it's looking for is shifting a little bit each frame. If you drag the look ahead frames way up, it's always gonna be looking for the same looking object in each frame. Hopefully that made sense. From there, we can actually jump into the, the anchor here and push show, and that'll give us a few extra options to work with. We can change our track size, our search size, um, all sorts of things, fail tolerance, all of that. And um, this can give you a little bit better track if you're having a really hard time getting a solid track. And we are gonna actually also add a rotation tracker. So come on up to your tracker, push add, and that will give us a rotation scale and you can do the same settings here. We're gonna drag this red one to, I like the top of the church here. It seems to do a really good job there for the rotation and scale in this particular shot. We are also gonna select the adjust rotation there. And from here, we're just gonna push analyze and we'll hope that it does the best that it can do. So sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't with motion. Looks like we didn't get lucky. Let's just back up a few frames, select our tracker there. And we will also select the other tracker, It'll line that back up with where we want it. And then we'll just push analyze again and it'll continue to, to analyze it. And we just need the track to be pretty good. Looks like it's doing a much better job now. Great. We've got a solid track. Now, if I play this back, you'll notice it looks atrocious. It's so shaky, but this is really easily fixed. So if you come on down here to our arrow selector and select the anchor point, we can drag this anchor point up to the cross, which is where our first tracker was. And now if we play this back, it's much smoother. And that's just because it's shifting the whole frame around this point rather than like if I put this way down, you'll see how badly it shakes it. So we'll just put that back on the cross and it's much smoother and much more usable. The last thing we're gonna wanna do is come on over to the borders and set this to zoom and that will auto zoom everything so that we don't have any black edges through this frame. So our video is looking much smoother. I'll throw up a little shot of the before and the after and it's looking way better. Now, one last thing we wanna do is actually throw this into Final Cut to get a true hyperlapse effect. So let's go ahead and hop up to share, export movie, and Apple, if you're ever watching this, if you could just add like a push to Final Cut button, that would be perfect. But anyway, hyperlapse tracked, and we can export that. Let's go ahead and hop into Final Cut Pro. Okay, so we've got a track. I'm just gonna drag it in from Finder into Final Cut Pro. And now we've got it in Final Cut, but let's go ahead and make this look like, you know, a real hyperlapse because they hyperlapses are always going super fast and this, this still looks like walking speed. So let's go ahead and push Command R and that will give us the retime features and we'll set that to something like four times. 
Now if I play it back, it looks much more like an actual hyperlapse. And usually they round the building and I know Santo Peter who requested this tutorial asked that I do something more complicated, but unfortunately I just didn't have the street ability to do that in this particular video. But all the principles are the same. So we've got this hyperlapse look and let's go ahead and add some motion blur to it. So if we come on up to our titles, let's try an adjustment layer. And I actually haven't tested this, so let's see if this works. Zoom. Okay, so we've got this zoom blur and I'm gonna put it over the cross. That's way too much, drag that down. Add shape mask, invert mask, put it around the main point that we want. Let's drag down that a bit. And now it lo looks like everything has motion blur without needing to get a plugin. So there you go. That is one way to create a hyperlapse in Final Cut Pro without any plugins. So we did it. We hit 1000 subscribers on YouTube and we're actually already at 1100 at the time of making this video. So it's growing very fast and I'm so excited and my mind is honestly kind of blown. I wasn't expecting this kind of support on YouTube. So thank you each and every one of you who has supported me in this new endeavor I have here on the YouTube platform. So as a thank you, I'm actually partnering with Soundstripe, who's just one of my favorite companies of all time. I'm partnering with them to give away two free licenses to their year subscription for their music and their sound effects to you guys. They were so excited to help me celebrate this incredible milestone. So here's how you enter. Like this video, comment and subscribe. And if you do those three things, you will be entered to win one of the two free licenses. And you can use that music to your heart's content. I've been using Soundstripe for the last two years for literally every single project I have worked on. Their music selection is incredible. Their sound effect selection is incredible. So if you wanna enter, make sure you like, comment, subscribe on this video and I will be drawing one of the names next week. And then if you like, comment, and subscribe on the next video, so you know you might only have to do two of those three things, hopefully next week, um, you will also be entered for that week. And then the following week, I will be drawing those names. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm so excited, honestly. I can't believe that Soundstripe was so willing to help a small creator like myself. So thank you guys for making this possible. And uh, go ahead and enter. Do it right now. Don't miss out. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week.